everybody. Welcome. Uh, we have a little special um, fashion show that we want to do a mask fashion show. Um, yes, good morning, because the fourth graders have been hard at work designing masks for all of our friends, even Mrs. Erica. I love your mask, Mrs. Erica. Oh, thank you, Lego Man. I know, isn't it nice? It says Mrs. Erica, technology robotics. And I even have another one that I that I left at home, but I've been getting so many fun masks. So I just want to say thank you to everybody. And the animals too have been getting some. So Lego Man, do you want to show yours off first? Yep, mine says Legos rock. And it says Legos are awesome. And look, I have another one. I turned it into a cape. Lego Man! And I am ready for the mission. Oh, wow, that's fun. All right, let's get Puppy. Puppy, um, come on out, Puppy. Come show off your masks. Oh, I have three masks. I think I'm the most popular one because I got three masks. Oh, Puppy, let's not brag about all the masks that you got. Just show them off. It says Puppy. It says Treasure Digging Dino Bones Puppy. Let's see your other ones. Let me hold them up so I can show it to everybody. Look, Puppy, how cute is that one? And he got another one too. Puppy, he got two more masks. You look so cute, Bubby. Let me get Mr. Fuzzy Woods. Come and show off your masks now. Um, Mr. Fuzzy Woods. I love my mask, guys. Thank you so much. I am so thankful. Snail, come show off your mask. I know you're a little bit shy, but come show it. I'm so happy that I got a mask that says Snail. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it really made my day. And I was so excited. Um, so thank you, everybody. Um, the fourth graders are amazing. Uh, you guys should start your own Etsy shop. I think you could probably get some money selling custom masks to everybody. Um, yeah, but I think they just like to make it for the animal friends. And we had one more friend that I have to go and get. Hang on. Hello, everybody. It's me, Bugsy Blow. I haven't been here in a while. Oh, hello, Bugsy. It's so nice that you're back with us. Um, do you want to show off the mask that you got? Yes, it says Bugsy Blue. Thank you so much. I love it so much. All right, let's try and see if we can get all the animal friends to come together and show off their masks now. So we have Bugsy Blue and we have Mr. Fuzzy Woods. Oh, you guys look so good. And then we have Lego Man. You boohoo. I'm here with my mask and I know I look amazing. Um, you don't have to tell me that mine looks the best. Oh, excuse me. You're always bragging. You and Puppy, seriously. Okay, let's see if we can get Puppy. Oh my gosh, how am I going to fit all of them together? Hang on. All right. Okay, now we have to get Puppy. Hello. <laughs> see, mine looks the coolest, right? Because it has the cool bones. All right, it, everybody's looks really nice. Let's, Snail, come on out. Come on, Snail. I know you're, you're coming. with all our masks. Yeah, you guys look really good. You guys look so cool. So you can say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, all right, everybody. I can't hold all of you guys at the same time. All right, we need to get started. Hi, guys. Um, Just a quick other video clip we forgot to add in here. Um, But I wanted to show you that I got a special present from a fourth grader. Do you want to see what it looks like? Should I hold it up? Yeah, hold it up. Look, it's my own present. It says to Lego Man from Engineer Joyce. I love Legos. Should I open it? Yeah, let's open it and let's see what it is. Okay, Lego Man, let's have him open it. I'll help you, okay? Let's see what's inside. Oh, this is such a nice box. Well, wow, it looks like Joyce made it. Let's see what's in there. Taking off the cover. Oh, I wonder what it is. Oh, my mask is falling off. <laughs> let's see what it is. Oh. It's another mask. Wow, look what it says. Let me hold it up when you put the box down. It says Lego Man. I love Legos. Joyce, this is so special. Thank you so much. Let's put it neatly back inside the box and let's keep it there. Okay, so you can keep your special present that you got. Um, I think I really am the most favorite animal friend. Well, I'm not even an animal. I'm a Lego man. But thank you, Joyce. 
I'm, you made my day and you made me feel really special. Yes, thank you, Joyce. Lego Man was very, very happy um, with his special present. So let's get started with our chapel. So hang on one sec, I have to get it ready. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. I had to take my mask off. It's hard to talk um, loud with the mask on. So um, here's Lego Man. Uh, we hope you enjoyed our mask fashion walk. Um, it was a lot of fun showing them off to all of you. Yeah, it was fun to see them all. So thank you so much, fourth graders. You guys are so creative. And um, you could have your own little fourth grade mask business there because you designed so many beautiful masks. So thank you. All right, so let's jump right into our message that we have today. Um, it is called Seeds of Change. So we're going to be learning about seeds. And you're probably thinking, why are we learning about seeds? But you'll find out in a few minutes. Let's go into our worship time now, and then we will come back with a store, a special video story. Guys, it has something to do with Legos. Don't spoil it. Okay, ready? Here we go. Can you pray for us since you have a special video for the kids this morning? Of course I can. Um, 
We praise you, Father God, for being so good. You're such a good, good father. And I pray this morning that your word would get into the hearts of all these kids, your children, and it would bring them so much joy and love. And I'm so excited about the video. Um, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I know you're so excited about the video. Lego Man, do uh, you want to tell them? Um, yes, I chose a video for the lesson because we're talking about the parable of the seed sower. And I want to let you watch it. I have some special Lego friends and they put together this Lego video that is about the story that we're learning. It was so cool. Okay, Um. so anyways, let me put it on. Um, all right, let me get it. Hang on. So yes, Lego Man, um, some of his friends have a video of Lego Man Presents the Parable of the Seed Sower. So let's watch it first and then we'll actually read the story in the Bible. Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. <sighs> but other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is with He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Oh, I love that, I love that, I love that. Did you guys enjoy it? My Lego friends worked really hard to make that for you guys. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, that was so cute. Thank you, Lego man. Um, okay, I would like to really read it from the Bible now. So hang on a minute. Okay, so here's my Bible app, and I am reading in Mark 4. So this is the parable of the sower. So please just listen. Um, it says, once again, Jesus went to teach the people at the shore of Lake Galilee, and a massive crowd surrounded him. The crowd was so huge that he had to get into a boat and teach the people from there. He taught them many things by using parables to illustrate spiritual truths, saying, consider this, a sower went out to sow. As he sowed, some fell along the beaten path, and soon the birds came and ate it. Some fell onto gravel with no topsoil and quickly sprouted since the soil had no depth. But when the days grew hot, the sprouts were scorched and withered because they didn't have enough roots. Some fell among the thorns, and thorns grew up and choked, choked them, and, ye and they yielded no fruit. But some fell onto good, rich soil that kept producing a good harvest. Some yielded 30, 60, 100-fold. If you understand this, then you need to respond. Afterward, Jesus' disciples and those close to him remained behind to ask Jesus about the parable. He said to them, the privilege of really knowing the mysteries of God's kingdom have been granted to you. 
And they were revealed through these parables, these stories. And so then he started to explain. He said, let me explain. The farmer sows the message of the kingdom. What falls on the beaten path represents those people who hear the message of God, but immediately Satan appears and snatches it from their hearts. And then what is sown on gravel represents those people who hear the message and they receive it joyfully, but because their hearts fail to let it sink deep, it doesn't last for very long. And when troubles come, they forget about it. And what is sown among the thorns represents those who hear the message, but they allow all of the cares of the life and the things that they want and their selfish nature to, to just steal the word away. But what is sown on good soil represents those who open their hearts to receive the message and they bear good fruit. So you may have heard that parable or story before about the different seeds. And the seeds, is, are what they're talking about is they're talking about the word of God. And that is what, is when you read the Bible, right? So say you read a Bible verse, like Legoman, I know you have a lot of favorite Bible verses. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Like I can build any Lego set in the world through Christ who strengthens me. Yes. Um, and so the word of God, that is the seed. Those are the seeds, all those Bible verses that you guys read. When you plant them, you plant them into your heart, into your mind, right? And so that is really what God is teaching is he's saying, if you really want to know about my kingdom and you really want to know me, then plant those seeds in your heart, in your mind, and plant them deep. And then what else does he say? He says, patiently believe. So guess what happens when you plant a seed, right? Just like if you had a, a pot with some soil and you planted some seeds, do you think you'd come back in about five minutes and you would see it growing this big plant? Um, That would be crazy. <laughs> yeah, that would be crazy. Um, it takes a long time, weeks, months, and even to grow a big tree, years, right? And so when you put God's word into your heart, those seeds of the truth, you have to trust that they are working. And you have to believe that they are doing what they are supposed to do. And this requires having patience. And we want to, things to happen right away, right? Just like all of you guys. Oh, I want it now. Well, guess what? God wants us to learn how to be patient because what he has for you is amazing, but it takes time to actually grow it. And the way that you keep growing it is by putting the word of God into you and you keep putting it in, putting it in, putting it in and just letting it stay. And we're going to talk about this. Don't dig it up, right? How many of you guys have done this before? Maybe you planted something and you didn't see anything grow and you started kind of maybe with your finger, you were digging around it. You're like, hmm, I wonder if there's anything under there, right? And you're looking around. Before you know it, the thing's dead because it can't grow because it got, you dug it up, right? And farmers, when they plant their seeds, they have to believe that it's growing in the ground even though they don't see it right away. And that's what we have to do. We have to believe, we have to have faith that when we read the word of God and we plant those seeds in our heart, that they are growing. And it might take time, but that's okay. We have to trust and believe that fruit will come out of our lives. Good things will come out of our lives if we stick with God and we believe what his word says. That's not easy, Mrs. Erica. I know you're right. It's not easy because having patience is very, very hard for all of us, especially in the world that we live in, where we just want to watch everything right away. And you can click on your iPad and you don't even have to wait. You know, when I was a kid, 
you only could turn on the TV. Whatever was on was on. You couldn't even choose the show. It was on at a certain time and that was it. Now you guys get to click on your iPads and you could watch any show at any time. You don't have to have patience, right? And that kind of makes it hard because God's kingdom is really the opposite. You have to trust and believe even when you don't see. And that's what faith is, right? It doesn't take faith to just get something right away. It takes faith to believe that the word or the seeds are working and growing even when you don't see them. So you really have to spend time in God's word. And I know some of you are very young and maybe you have you need the help of an adult to really read the Bible. And I think that's great if you could sit down with somebody and let them read it to you. Or maybe they have a children's Bible for you that you can look, take a look at. If you're older and you can maybe do it on your own, um, you can try searching. Um, if you're allowed, you can ask a parent like the um, that Bible app I just had on the computer. You can search different things. So say you're feeling worried, you could search worry and then you could find a Bible verse about it. Um, or you need more patience, you could search that word and then you could find a Bible verse. And that can really be helpful because you can then take that word or that seed and put it inside of you and you can know that's the truth. And it can help you to change and become the person that God wants you to be. So remember, we're born into this fallen world, right? The world is not perfect, as you guys know. Um, there's pain, there's bad things that happen, and none of these things are caused by God. They're not what God wants, but he knows that we live in a fallen world and these things happen because people have, they can choose, right? And for us as Christians, we want to make sure we are always choosing the truth. And where do we find the truth? We find it in the word of God, in those seeds that we can plant inside of us. And then that brings about the change. So if we really need help with something, we can go to the truth of God's word, we can plant those seeds, and then we can see the change come out into our life, and it could help us to become a better person, the person that God wants us to be, because God wants us to live our best life ever, and his best is really found in his word, and that's how we can know how to find the best, is by finding it in God's word, so it is amazing um, that we have this amazing gift that God has given us, these seeds in his word, and that we can use them to really bring change into our lives. And change is not easy, right? Like for some of you, maybe you have had to change schools before, or maybe you've had to change where you live if you're in an apartment or a house or something. Maybe you moved. Um, maybe some of you even have moved from other states or other countries. Change can be very hard. It can be scary because we stop and we think, what will it be like? Will I like it? Will it be better? Will it be worse? And it's the same thing when we are living a life with God. We sometimes stop and think, God, what are you going to change me into? Am I going to like it? Right? And here's the answer. You will love it. Because your creator is your father, God in heaven, and he knows the best life for you. And you might be able to think of your best life. And guess what? God's best life is way better than your best life. So just something for you guys to think about this week as you study God's word and you plant it in your hearts. Just know that it really is powerful and it can really help you to bring about the, the change in your life that God wants to bring. Wow, yeah, that's so important. Um, I know that I need to change a lot sometimes because um, I can be selfish and I have to stop and think of God's word that it says to put others before me and their needs before mine so I could really show the love of Jesus to them, but it's not easy. Yeah, and that's okay. We all have struggles of things that are not easy, but the best part is that God loves us and he always wants to help us and he gives us his word to really help us. Um, who wants to close us in prayer, puppy? <laughs> yes, I want to come show off my mask again. Do you like it? 
<laughs> oh, puppy, you're so funny. All right, can you pray for us? Um, yes. Um, we thank you, Father God, for this message. Um, and we thank you for this the story of the seeds. And I pray that all of the kids, their their seeds would be like the seeds that fell on the on the good soil, and that it would produce fruit and amazing blessings would come out of their lives, and they would be world changers. And they would change into the people that God wants them to be and created them to be. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, puppy. And thank you, everybody, for um, being with us today. We'll see you guys next time. Okay. Bye, guys.